everyone. I'm going to run down a video here on how to put a disc brake conversion on a, this is a 65 Ford Fairlane, um, but it works the same for Mustang, Falcon. Um, I'm not a huge Ford guy, so I'm sure there's others that it works pretty well the same for, but the kit is actually a Mustang kit uh, for a V8 non-standard car, which should work for this. Um, but anyways, as far as the drum and to disc conversion goes, that's all the same. It's just a matter of the booster up top and whether it's going to fit. I'm pretty sure it will fit because this has been modified with a different um, setup from standard. It's a newer Mustang setup, so it should be fine. Um, so I'm going to go through this part of it, which will be the disc brake swap. And then we'll do the second part of the video will be on the actual conversion of the booster. So I went with power brakes on this um, and obviously dual piston master cylinder. So this stuff all came from CJ's Ponies. Um, pretty good kit. So here's the pretty decent instructions. Here's the kit. Um, you get two instruction booklets with it. Uh, this one here actually is the complete instruction book for doing the swap and then the other one is if you were just swapping in the um, brake booster. So this is a CJ Pony kit. Um, part number is DBF193. Um, again it's for V8 automatic front power disc brake conversion um, and the reason why they say V8 is the um, six cylinder spindles on a Mustang is different. Um, basically also you can tell if you've got five lugs or not. So this is for a five lug. This is a, a fair lane that has five lug so it's already got that um, spindle on there so everything works just fine. So I ordered this online. I'm up in Canada. It was actually pretty easy to order. Um, place the order and go through that because they had a Canadian portion in there so it already gave me the, the exchange rate on the price. Um, so I, I'm really happy with this. I've had it sitting around for a while though, while I've been waiting to get working on this car. So let's get to it and I'll show you how it's done. You're going to want to go ahead and pull the drum off, obviously, uh, pull the cap off. So this car, someone had started a restoration on it before I got it. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff already done and cleaned up on it. There's other stuff that I'm not too happy with that they did, but isn't that always the case, unfortunately, when you get someone else's project? Um, but it happens. So I don't know that I really need to, obviously if you're tackling this job, you've probably done brakes before, I would hope. Uh, brakes are, for myself, are fairly easy to do. We used to be, uh, started out my apprenticeship as an auto mechanic and then I was a marine mechanic. Obviously you don't do brakes for boats, but um, did a fair amount of jobs when I was an apprentice auto mechanic. So I don't know that I need to walk you through, hopefully, how to do the whole setup, but basically just pull the drum off um, to get it out of the way, you could leave it on there, but it'll fall off when you're getting it off. Then you've got four studs here um, with nuts on the back. So you got to get those off and then basically this whole assembly will just come off as one piece. You also need to disconnect the brake line, which I'll do right now. Also on this car, they've put the 
brake line in kind of a weird spot. The factory spot is up underneath the control arm here where this line is supposed to go. Um, if I had kept this where it is, you're, I'm actually going to run into the tire um, when I turn the tire. So that's just wanted to make note of that, that this isn't the factory location. You will want to have a bucket underneath too, uh, because it obviously will drain out the fluid. You can suck the fluid out of the master uh, master cylinder up top if you like. Uh, I didn't bother. I've already done the other side. Basically, I wanted to run through this to make sure that it was going to fit before I made a video. Another note too is I did also pre-soak these nuts with uh, penetrating fluid, but as you can see they're still pretty easy to get off. The other problem that I'm having is the actual nut itself, I don't know what's happened over the years or why, but a 9 16 is too big, half inch is a bit too small. That would lead me to think that maybe it would be 14 or 13. See if one of those fit on. But why would a 1965 be metric? Anyway, so I have to hammer a half inch on. See that anyways fun times Right in the goo. Oh, of course, not slippery. I don't recommend doing this at home, but sometimes you just gotta make things work.
Okay, so now that I've got that off, basically you just need to get this drum assembly off. And I wish it was easier than it was, but I'm gonna have to pound this pretty hard. Um, the other side was pretty difficult to come off. Maybe this side will be easier, but we'll see. Okay, so I finally got the backing plate off. Uh, that was a bit of a struggle. Um, so here we are, next day. Uh, just painted some stuff up, so that's what I was waiting for. Obviously, had to heat this up, so I was waiting for this to cool down. Um, and then I painted some stuff up here that just didn't get painted, I guess, the last time all this was painted. And uh, so now we're gonna clean this up a little bit and mount the caliper bracket to it. So here we go. So the new caliper bracket just gets held on with four bolts, bracket goes on first, um, and then the dust shield over top of it, and this all gets bolted up like that. So if it's not obvious, there's one long bolt that goes in this bottom bolt hole here, facing the back of the car was the same thing on both sides. This was actually the one that I had a tough time getting out.
Okay, so now we're ready to install the rear, which is quite easy. Install the seal in the back. Comes with the seal, comes with bearings. Um, there's actually two sets of bearings to this, I guess depending on what spindle you have. Um, so I had to go through and figure out which bearings fit for my application, um, which was pretty easy. So I used the two smaller bearings. Um, the only thing that this kit actually didn't come with was a cotter pin for here. I don't know if maybe mine was just missing it or whatever, but I happen to have cotter pins anyways. So I had pre-packed my bearings, um, just tapped the seal in the back of the rotor, comes with the seals for the rotor. So tap those, put the back bearing in, tap the seal in, um, and there you go. I'm assuming, obviously, I've probably said it before, if you're tackling this job, you've probably done brakes before, so I wasn't gonna go through packing a bearing and all that stuff. Um, but I will show you my procedure that I've done over the years for tightening these nuts down. Um, everybody has a little bit, I guess not really a, a little bit different trick, but everybody sort of does, I found over the years, some guys do it a little bit differently. Um, I, because this is new, I'll tighten them up a little bit more than I would maybe an older set. Um, because these will, I find that the bearings do tend to loosen up. Again, that's just me. Everybody's a little bit different. So I usually give them a spin to see, crank it down tight, back it back off a couple times, crank it down. Now, the other thing I want to pay attention to is on my spindle, the cotter pin goes this way. So that's just basically tight and I'm right in front of it. So obviously I want to be past that. So I'm going to have to tighten this up a little bit more. And how I tighten them, I usually loosen it off, give it a spin, tighten it up. Loosen it off again. This, these are brand new bearings and I've just packed them. So there we go. I've now cleared the cotter pin. I know my nut is nice and tight. It still spins fairly tightly, but again, these are brand new bearings. They've just been packed. So that spins for me. So that's the way I'm going to leave it. So, put my cotter pin in. Some guys like to break these off. I don't, I usually leave it like that. And I'm sure someone's gonna comment on that saying that's not the way you're supposed to do it. But this is just the way that I've always done it. Bend them over, that can't turn, can't get anywhere. I usually give them a tap just to get those in. Nice and tight. That's how I do my cartons. Again, people have a little bit different way. I don't think there's any proper way to do this or not. You could spin it so it goes way through, bend the tab over, cut one off. I think personal preference, but that's not going in. Now, the dust shield. Um, this is something that was a bit tricky to get on the other side, hammering these dust shields on. It's pretty tight, pretty tight to this rotor, so we'll see how I make out on this side. Now, yes, I know there is a tool to put these on that goes around. You could find something to go over. I don't have one, never have. I've always just sort of done it that way. Obviously, when they get older and go off and on, you can usually go and knock them on straight in the center. Did put a little bit of dent in there, but that won't matter. Won't change anything. Okay, so next, at this point, I like to go ahead and clean my rotor, use some brake clean and spray it all off. Um, then I'm gonna mount my caliper. 
and uh, put the hose on. And for, for now, this is pretty well done. Um, I will connect up. I think I have to make a new line for here. I don't have enough because this line shouldn't actually go to here. It should go underneath. There's a tab underneath here. Um, so that's basically how it goes for the install here. It's pretty simple. Uh, very easy. Just connect your lines up, bleed the brakes. Um, obviously with this kit, these cars come with a single piston master cylinder. So if you're just doing the disc brake conversion, uh, I would probably recommend putting the master cylinder on because this master cylinder is not going to work. Um, in my opinion anyways, and probably a lot of people will say that this master cylinder is not going to work. Single piston, meant for drum brakes all the way around. It's not going to be sufficient enough for disc brakes up front, especially the four piston calipers. You need the bigger bore size. Um, so you're going to want to change that. So whether you go power or manual, um, that's determined by yourself. I've got power. So that'll be in the second half of the video. Once I make up this brake line, um, I'll do another video on that of mounting that unit up. We'll see how that goes. Um, I haven't test fitted at all, so I have no idea what's going to happen there. But there we go. There's how you put that on. I'll show you how to mount the caliper now. So here's how the caliper comes, preloaded. All the clips and everything are already in it. Um, pay attention when you pull it out that these washers are in there. Um, it comes with two, but you actually only need one for this style um, brake hose that goes on here. On here. Um, so, you, but make sure you don't throw those out. Don't lose them um, because they're actually kind of tricky to find sometimes at the parts stores. Also, always make sure which side's which. Brake bleeder goes up. Okay, so said you may have to do this in the instructions. The other side I didn't have to, it seemed to be okay. Um, but this side here, I'm gonna have to trim back this dust shield um, to get the caliper on. Just running into the dust shield so I can't get that upper bolt in. So we will have to trim a bit of that back. Okay, so I did notice on the other side too, when I was tightening these, these down, uh, when I got one of the bolts tight, the caliper still rocked a little bit. I thought, okay, well that's funny. So I tightened the other bolt down. Once you get both of them tight, the caliper seems to lock in. Um, it does take a little bit. I did actually notice, so what I did on the other side, I didn't have to do it here, as you saw. I was able to just tighten them up. I just, I tightened them up and backed them out and then tightened them up again. Um, and got that all locked in but this side is good it's all locked in so basically all I have to do now is connect up my hose um, and away we go so I wanted to do this just because I didn't see any videos on it the instructions were a little bit confusing to me of which way the backing plate went and the bracket so that's why I wanted to show that on the video um, the curved part of the bracket um, goes towards the outside the flat part goes on the inside um, so I'll take the phone off now and show you what I mean um, so there's our caliper all mounted on. 
Um, looks good from the back side too. Um, you can go ahead and paint all this if you like. Um, the backing plate seems to be plated, so I'm gonna leave it. I like it looking silver. That's just me, so even if I was gonna paint it, I was gonna paint it silver. Um, these calipers, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but they're pretty shiny silver, so they look like they're coated as well in something. Um, so I'm gonna leave them, but that's just me. You can go ahead and paint all this stuff up if you like, but I like it silver, and I'm gonna leave it, see what happens. Um, so there's, there's that side. Passenger side, I've got mounted up with the hose. Um, so there's our hose routed up and out of the way. That is out of the way of the tire. I checked clearances and all that yesterday. Um, you will just, again, this is a Fairlane. I don't know if it's any different on the Mustang, but there's where your hose goes up underneath to the stock hose. It has the same fitting size and everything to fit up in there. Um, on this car, because of my big 14 inch tires, I have to use a spacer, but I'll go ahead now and show you that it does fit with the 14 inch tires. So let me get that bolted up and I'll show you that it clears. Okay, so here's my 14 inch rim bolted up. I believe these are 14 by sevens. Um, so they're quite wide. The tires are 235, 60, 14s. Um, and so with the drum brakes, actually, it's still, even with that spacer, it hit the upper control arm. But now, I don't know if you can see or not, but now I've got clearance to that upper control arm. So I should be good. Um, we'll see once I set the car down and put it down, but there's a decent amount of clearance in there, um, but it does fit. I can turn full lock. Nothing hits there, nothing rubs. Spin the tire nice. Um, we'll turn it back the other way. Right. So I chose this kit specifically so that it will fit with these 14 inch tires. Um, I like the look of these wheels and tires that came on the car. So why bother change them is sort of what I thought. Um, so that's why I wanted this kit. There are some different kits out there that maybe are a little bit less money. Um, but again, I wanted to keep this stock rally wheel look um, on the car because I just like the way that it looks. So obviously these are old tires. I've got some new tires for it. Again, 235, 60, 14s. Um, so just stay tuned and I will have the other portion of this video. I've got some other stuff to do on the car while it's up in the air. Then once I bring it down, I'm gonna go ahead and mount up that master cylinder. We'll go through bleeding the brakes because um, these four piston calipers can be a bit tricky to bleed. So it takes quite a while. Um, but we will go through that, and so just stay tuned for the next video. Thanks.